When we teach the Manchester United case, uh, and you've seen that happen uh, several times now, what do you feel are the, are the key learnings? Everyone that worked at Manchester United knew who Alec Ferguson was. I didn't change. Because I think that when the people change their mind all the time or change their philosophies all the time, it can be confusing to the work staff. I've come to Aberdeen, north of Scotland, to manage Manchester United, biggest brand football hand in the world. I'll tell you, I was scared. I had a lot of trepidation about it because this is a massive club. But I said to myself, I am not going to change. I am not going to change. I'm going to do what I believe in. And I wasn't afraid to do that. I think that fears could kill people. It's also, also can be an inspiration to you. Now you're, you're a business mogul in many ways or a business influencer. Has that really hit you that, that now across the world business leaders are listening to what you have to say about leadership and managing teams? In a 26 year period at United, what it was achieved is extraordinary, really. When I joined United, they're worth 10 million. It's now worth 2 billion. So that is an incredible uh, progress. And it's not all down to Alec Ferguson. You know, that's down to the, those fantastic players I had. Marvellous players. And the pleasing thing about it is not only did we produce good young footballers, we produce good human beings. What I was good at as a young coach was young people. My first job had no money, so what did I do? I coached, I scouted, I trialed young people. And I was good at it. And you've said that as a leader, as a manager, you play different roles at different times. And one approach might be suitable for one player, but not for another player. So it's constantly trying to find, presumably, what is the right style for each individual. Yeah, well, you have to be versatile at that. You have to motivate human beings. You have to try and get them to be the best they possibly can be. And I think also that um, recognition, to recognise your work staff and praise them. Um, because I always feel the value is that you're building a fort around yourself. You know, that you're, you're, you recognise the contributions made on a regular basis by people who you depend on. Most managers who are successful stick with whatever formula brought them that success and maybe hang on to it for too long. But your willingness to, to evolve and to adapt to that change in the, uh, in the environment and in, and in science was really uh, quite unusual. I think the important thing is to accept change. What worked 25 years ago didn't necessarily mean it was going to work forevermore. So we're always moving all the time, always forward. If you believe in something, don't be afraid to do it. That was a gamble. Didn't matter to me. The risk was was worth it. The intention was to win the match. That's my job. To send fans home, back, home happy, to make sure that we've done everything possible to get the result. Did you think back in the day that some of those lessons that you were learning might ever be applicable to the wider area of business? I don't look at myself as a professor of educational abilities as some of the people I've been meeting in the last few years. But nonetheless, I think there is a, a certain element of my career that can help people. No matter what industry you're in, whether it's football or finance or a doctor or, 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 or in a hospital, leadership qualities are, are similar.